Okay, hello everyone. How are you? It's Kay. Let's start the live stream today. I hope you're having a great weekend. So, uh, this is Saturday on the 10th of September. And today, every Saturday, I talk about some psychology or uh, mindset topics. So today, in this live stream, most likely I won't check any charts, but uh, hopefully you enjoy the, the live stream until the end of, of this one. Hold on, so let me check, let me get ready here. I just finished the, the class, so I'm just get, getting ready here now. Okay, so I get this, uh, I get this uh, yeah, software ready. I get this comment ready. Okay, so it looks like everything is good. Okay, so yeah, as a quick disclaimer, uh, in this YouTube channel, everything is basically based on uh, educational purposes only. So when you take trades, please do at your risks. Also, please be careful. Uh, with the uh, spams in the social media. Okay, so let's see who's here. All right, TSM, thank for joining. Good to see you. Yeah, most likely I won't check the charts today on this public, but uh, on the membership live stream after this, I will be doing the uh, wave theory review. So in there, I can talk about some charts. Okay, Win, thank you for joining. Dirk, good to see you. Alex FX, good to see you too. Thank you for joining. And Oscar, good to see you too. Thank you for joining. And Tony Gold, and Homan. All right, Yuri, thank you for joining. Vinicius and PW, good to see you. Randy, and TikTok Movie Hero. All right, John Hera, and uh, good to see you here. Okay. Okay. Um, Bierhanga, sorry, Bierhanga, good to see you too. Thank you for joining. All right, and uh, yeah, TikTok, yes, new live stream corner is pretty cool. Yes, in the back, right? I recently uh, changed the layout. Actually, I changed the angle of the camera because camera was facing that way before. But uh, I see some reflections on the window at night time when the outside gets darker. And that's why I changed my camera angle to this way. So that you don't see the reflections of, um, of these monitors and myself through the window. So I'm still setting up in the background. So I'm actually still you know, getting, re getting ready for the new shelf and uh, some uh, bookshelf in the back. So for now, it looks like this. So this is, yeah, I live in Dubai right now. I mean, not in Japan, I'm in Dubai. And this is the 10th of September at 6 p.m. So yeah, good to see you, everyone. Thank you for joining again. Okay. Yeah, Arvid, thank you for joining too. Good to see you. All right. Yes, I changed the new desk setup corner. Yes, I bought a new PC and um, I changed the background a little bit. So, yeah, I feel fresh. I feel fresh now. Sometimes I think you better do. I think uh, if you change the room, and if you change the layout of the room, you feel like you live in the new room, right? And actually that, that actually creates some creativity and uh, you, you kind, of, kind of feel start fresh. So, yeah. Like every year, I change the layout of the room. So for now, it's like this, but next year, you might see some different. Yeah. All right. Uh, Dedayo, good to see you. Thank you for joining also. All right. 
And TSM and Vinicius also good to see you too. Okay. Yes, so no more room reflections in the background. So this is Saturday, the markets are closed, so I'm just going with a kind of easy going style today. So and today I have to finish the live in about 30 minutes from now because I have a few things to do. So it will be a bit shorter live stream, but I hope you enjoy until the end. So today, as the title says, I wanted to talk about the steps to learn trading. Because looking back my journey of trades, I have been trading full time for the last 9 years. And 9 years has been quite long. But when I first started to trade full time, basically I was kind of lost. Because um, I didn't really know how to improve my trades. And I had some basic knowledges in terms of the price action, the lines, and some indicators. But um, I didn't really know how to like uh, how to wait for the entries and uh, how to select the pair to trade and um, how what to look at, what to focus uh, for entries and also exits. Also, I was very poor at risk management, money management at that time. So all these were very you know, uh, big, big lessons for me. Especially for the first three years, I was losing to break even, so it was a bit tough for me. And I don't want you to repeat the same mistake over again, and that's why I once in a while talk about this topic, about how to learn forex trading step by step. And in fact, actually, there is a stats uh, two weeks back on Saturday, I created this uh, this um, vote uh, hold on let me open this so this is the vote I took if you have seen this in the, my YouTube channel hold on let me switch the screen sorry this is still new PC so I'm not really familiar still f not familiar so let me just uh, get this one okay so here we go so yeah, every week I post this kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, how do you say, like a, like a poll, a vote. And uh, yeah, so um, yeah, 12, day, 12 days ago, I asked to the community, how long do you have experience in trading for commodity, crypto stocks, etc. And I got 684 votes and 0 to 1 year is 36% and 1 to 3 years 42% and 3 to 5 years 12 and 5 years above 11%. So it looks like between 0 to 3 years experience is the most uh, in my community, almost like 80% in my community. So that means um, if I talk about my own experience between zero to three years that might be interesting to the community and that's why I decided to talk about that topic today. So how to learn Forex, how to learn trading is very much different I think from uh, what we learned on other areas like the, uh, the sports. Sports might be the same but these are uh, you know uh, uh, to, to uh, to pass exams, for example, or uh, go to university, uh, it's very different. Go uh, get some a certificate, um, study, get, get some certificate. The mindset is very much different. But sports might be the same um, because the learning curve is definitely different. You know, looking back my own trading journey for the zero to three years. Um, I had the basic knowledge because before I was a part-time trader and full-time worker and then even when I, when I was a part-time trader, when I was learning, it was fun 
it was fun to gain knowledge and um, start to know something new and uh, start to apply something I learned in trades. And that was all very interesting and all very uh, excited. And if I meet some new information, some new techniques, it always excited myself. And I think that's the experience from zero to one year. You are new, you're open to the trades and you're open to the new knowledges and you look for what works and what doesn't work in trades. I think that's for zero to one year step. And after one year of experience, I think you will start to realize that uh, you know uh, there is no strategy that works 100%. That was my uh, realization. You know, after trying number of trades, number of uh, indicator strategies, I paid I paid for lots of money for the indicators and tools, but uh, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't work. And I was look, looking for the holy grail that works 100% in my trades. But yeah, um, I, I realized that there is no such a thing. And for the second year onwards, what I did was I, I learned to test. I learned to practice and test one strategy. Instead of looking at the result out of 10 trades, I started to look at more numbers in trades and stats. So I was asking myself, out of 50 trades, how many times I can win, how many times I can lose, and how many break-even. Well, back then there was no break-even mindset uh, when I was a second year. So basically I was thinking uh, which one works, which one doesn't work out of 50 trades. And I tested it and it worked. Some strategies worked. When I took uh, 50 trades, then I got some nice profit of uh, like a 20% return, 20%, 30% return. And that, that's when I realized that, okay, this system, this system works. And I got confident that the system works and then I quit my job. So after uh, doing part-time trader for the two years, I quit my job and I became full-time trader. And then I suffered for three years, another three years until I get profitable. And looking back, I think one of the big mistakes, I think one of the biggest mistakes was I, I believed one system too much. Like, um, so I didn't, no, I didn't um, really intending to, to change or modify the strategy or simply I was using, keep using the same strategy over and over again. So uh, yeah, simply uh, that was my big mistake. I was too rigid on uh, the strategy I was using because it was working when I was working full-time, trading part-time and I was confident. But I was, I would say looking back, I was overconfident too confident on that strategy, so I was a bit stubborn um, not to change the strategy when it start, doesn't work. So that's why I lost uh, very big on the first year when I became a full-time. Also I was very poor at risk management. I didn't really know about the stop loss because all I matter was whether the market goes towards my direction or not. And if the market goes towards my direction, then I win. I fix profit at some point. But um, if the market goes back, I kept holding the position. Because the market might go down. And then in the future, I was thinking that the market goes up to my position. And afterwards, I thought it goes up. So I used to keep holding the losses, holding and losing positions over time, maybe uh, one week, two weeks, three weeks, or the whole month. I used to keep holding the losses. And that was not a, you know, um, 
uh, healthy mindset because I was always thinking about my losses and I couldn't take additional trades because of the margin is getting smaller and smaller. I couldn't take other trades. If I want to take other trades, I had to transfer money to the broker and uh, I get more fund in my trading account and then take other, other trades. But if the losses are getting bigger and bigger, then psychologically, I felt very unstable and uh, I was always curious and I was always thinking whether I exit my loss or not. But uh, when I was holding the losses for the, for the let's say, one week or so, um, I stopped exiting. So, but instead, I kept holding, uh, hoping that the future, the market goes towards my direction. And I fail. And after that experience, uh, I learned how to use the stop loss and the risk management, how to risk per trade. The risk management was the second uh, topic of my trading career. So I think first, so for the first zero to one year, um, you will learn the knowledge. Um, what happens in behind in, in the markets and also uh, yeah, what works, what doesn't work, what kind of indicators, what kind of strategies there are in the world. And between one to three years, I think this is the most important year. Because um, if you took trades for the three years, for example, and if you're not success in, successful yet, then you might quit. Yeah, people usually quit trading if they are not profitable for two years in average. So if you are on the third year and still not profitable, then you may get discouraged already in psychology, right? So um, because I was the one too. I, I part-time trade for two years in full-time three years, but still I wasn't profitable. So in total of five years, I was losing and losing every year, and that was very painful. But I didn't quit myself. I didn't quit because um, I didn't want to come back to the full-time job. And to my past colleagues, I said that you know I will be successful, so I never come back. So I said goodbye to everyone. And that's why if I come back to the company, it's kind of embarrassing. So that's another reason I didn't want to come back. But instead, I focused on how to improve my trace because there must be a way. I was believing that there must be a way to get through and to get success in trace because there are some success successful traders in the world. Uh, so I was thinking I can be the one also. But I just didn't know how to do it. I just didn't know how to uh, get better at trades. So that's kind of the mindset I had on the first and second year. And in third year was a break-even year. In third year was I found a breakthrough for the last four years of losing period. And what was breakthrough was I was break-even. Yeah. I didn't lose. I didn't lose trades, but I wasn't also winning trades. But break even was my first time I experienced for the for the six months or so towards the end of the third year, six months, I was break even. Before I was keep losing, losing, losing every every month, and I was kind of get used to the losses. But the last six months of the third year. I was break even and I applied risk management and I applied the stop loss strategies. And when I had these break even trades, I thought I can win trades in the long run. I was I became confident. Um, so that was the biggest breakthrough. Yeah, although I was not winning yet. 
something in me changed, I felt, and I thought I can win trace. And on the fourth year onwards, up until now, I keep making profits every year. So that's why I say risk management becomes a key to success because risk management and psychology are closely related because losses are closely related to the psychology or mindset emotion and risk management protects you from losing big and protects you from um, psychological stress. So I think um, it's kind of rough sketch of my journey for my losing four years and up until the break even on the third year of my full-time trade, full-time trader career. So speaking about the learning curve, this is also something I mentioned about based on my experience is that you know the learning curve, like uh, the, the, the horizontal is a horizontal, let me just uh, get this on a bigger screen. So horizontal is the time, let's say, and vertical is the, the profit or what you gain, right? In, in ordinary uh, lessons or studies, the more you study, the more you gain knowledge and the more you get, get the result. So it goes parallel like this way, the learning curve. But in Forex or in trading, it's not like parallel. Um, first one year and two years, three years, no matter how much you learn and no matter how much you practice, you become break even or even even gets worse, it goes negative. It goes negative and you lose some money. And then if you keep studying by putting more time, suddenly it spikes up like this way. And I think this is a learning curve in trades, just based on my experience. Uh, because the amount of knowledge I have never correlated with the result in my trades. So now I'm only using Ichimoku Kinko Hyo for higher time frames and entry confirmations. I, I use a couple of indicators, but I don't use number number of dozens of indicators. I only use a few indicators and price action lines very simple strategy, but I can make profits. Um, so I really believe that less is more. So the, the, amount of no, the amount of knowledge does not really correlate to the profits in the result in trades because of this, because of this uh, learning curve. It always stays like this in a flat or negative and then suddenly it spikes up like this. And one of the breakthroughs again with my, you know, big big uh, learning curve up was the risk management, mastering the risk management. Not about the strategies, not about the indicators, not about entries or exits, but the risk management uh, made me a breakthrough. So. That's actually one of the things that um, I was thinking by looking back my trading career. So, and that's the topic I wanted to talk about and share, share it with everyone today. Okay, I still see some comments now. Let me see. Okay, yeah, thank you for joining everyone on this relaxing Saturday. Today is Saturday, the market's closed, so I don't really check charts. I will do some uh, weekly review, weekly forecast tomorrow, every Sunday. But today is about some free talk about how to learn trades. So what kind of difficulties do you have right now in terms of how to learn trades? If you have some you know, difficulties, please let me know on the comment. Okay, Venetia says, uh, how do you, um, do, how, uh, how you do your backtest on TradingView? 
On trading view, I use the bar replay. So here is the trading view. And let's say if I want to backtest on the pound AUD, I simply go back somewhere in the past. And I don't want to check the candlesticks, so I zoom out like this. And let's say if I want to practice on this downtrend, then I click on the bar replay and then come back to around here somewhere and then zoom in again and then move candles one by one and see if we can enter trace. So with my strategy, I take the daily downtrend to follow and then I check the one hour should be pointing down but this this one, one hour is now flat. Right, one hour Kumo Kijun Sen flat so I move the candles one by one like this until one hour turns bearish. So it's about to break the support. But I just move the candles one by one until it breaks or until Kumo Kijun Sen turns bearish. So it's retracing back like this. I simply skip. Okay, so now there is a breakout. But Kijun Sen still in the Kumo. Kumo is too small, so it may retrace. So I'm not gonna go in yet. Okay, so here this is looking nice. So here I go down to the five minute time frame. And then look for an entry timing. So when I look for an entry timing, I simply set I simply set this uh if I wanna enter sell here. I put the sell position here on the horizontal line and the stop loss also on this horizontal line like this and then keep forwarding the chart. This is how I backtest in trading view. And then I track all the numbers in the spreadsheet and get the stats on the spreadsheet. Yeah, so trading view is also a good tool, perfect tool to backtest also. But personally, I prefer Forex Tester because you can run the chart in multiple time frames at the same time and you can physically place orders and physically place the stop losses and also you can move the stop losses just like you do in your uh, MT4, MT5. So, yeah, Forex Tester is my handy. So I don't usually back this on TradingView, but technically you can in this way. Okay, PW says, accept lo losing the worst enemy is fear. Yeah, that is true, that is true. The fear of losing, right? Yeah, Enrico says, uh, Hi K, seems to me you are a millionaire before you even started trading correct. Three condos in Tokyo must have cost more than 1 million USD. Is trading currently your only source of income things? Uh, I wasn't a millionaire before when I started the trades because I was, um, I was uh, getting the fund to have the, con have the three condos in Tokyo. Also, when I was working full time, I was doing some side businesses. So I had some nice incomes. So. But after I became full-time trader, became my source of income. It was became the only source of income. And not right now also, Forex is my main source of income. And I don't have other businesses. I'm thinking to start new business next year in Dubai. But uh, right now I have no business. So trading is my main source of income right now. Yeah, all right, JJ, good to see you. Thank you for joining. Yeah, okay, Vinicius says, have another way to do backtesting, K. Yeah, so, yeah, the trading view and the Forex tester, I know only these two for backtesting. All right, thank you for joining. Good to see you. Yeah, Emperor, thank you for joining also. Sami says, would you please let me know when Tenkan Sen is flat, what does it mean? When Tenkan Sen flat, that means 
um, in the short term traders are in the break even. Short term buy and sellers are a 50 50 level. That's what the Tenkan Sen means because Tenkan Sen shows the short term, Kijun Sen shows the mid term, and Senko Span B shows the long term. Yeah, okay, thank you for joining everyone. Good to see you. All right, Camillus, good to see you too. JJ says, sometimes when I see price bandwalking or if it makes a new breakout, I tend to feel like I'm missing out and uh, I'll enter, but most times price tend to retrace heavy and I lose, depending on the stop loss. Right, so make sure your stop loss is not too tight. You have, have, you have to have enough room to stop loss. Otherwise, yeah, you get stopped out every time you enter trace. Yeah. Okay, I see many comments now. Thank you for joining. Thank you for your comments. Ahmed says, I get profit Euro JPY yesterday with Ichimoku like your uh, expansion strategy. Okay. That's good, that's good. So yeah, keep keep using that. Yeah, okay. Datamine says, uh, do you use other tools for your fundamentals such as Ortex, etc.? Uh, no, I don't, I don't. I only use a chart, trading view, and uh, yeah, new website, and the currency strength chart, and that's about it. Yeah, I used to use these tools from Oanda. They have like, like the heat map or the volume or like, like a histogram, histogram in a chart, market orders, New York options. I used to refer to these information, but uh, not anymore. Okay, Enrico says, uh, I'm confused. You say trading is my main source of income. Does this mean that trading is your only source of income? Yes, that is correct. Now I do this YouTube and I started to do the GTS class and Ichimoku community, but as compared to my profits in trades, it's really very small. So yeah, trading is my main source of income and I don't have other, other businesses. Yeah, because if I do other businesses, then most likely I won't have time to do the live streams or um, you know, I won't be have time to do the GTS or Ichimoku community. Plus, I don't spend so much time in trades. I only screen charts three times per day, and every time when I screen, I only take few few minutes. So I don't take that long to screen charts and take trades. Because time efficiency is another key to success. And that's also another breakthrough when I was learning trades. Before I was spending almost all day, like more than uh, 12 hours, um, I had six screens and uh, I, was I was scalping before when I was first started the trades. As a full time, I was a scalper. So I spend so much time in the charts and I spend more time than working full time job. But uh, at the end of the month, even if I spend so much time per day, I lost, I was losing. And that was the most frustrating moment I ever had. Yeah, why do I lose? Still, I, you know, screen charts 12 hours per day. Every day I do. And I also study charts, study markets. And I put more effort in time than, than when I was a full-time full -time worker. But still I lose. When I'm a full-time worker, I, I, still, I still, you know, um, get, get, the, get the money, right, every month. I get paid every month, but uh, in trades, it wasn't like that. So that was also a very stress, a big stress. Yeah. So 
and that's when I realized that the uh, you know how much time in screen charts does not always relate to how much you make profits. That's why, if so, um, I was thinking how to take less time in screen charts, but how to make more profits was my was my uh, mindset. And then um, I, re I built my strategy with this uh, multiple time frames and trend follow by using Ichimoku and it worked really well. Okay, RD says, uh, how to choose the best pair to trade if there are? Uh, best pair to trade would be about the Kumo shape. If you see the thickest Kumo, then that's the best pair to trade. Yeah, I never go in with the thin Kumo. Okay, Michael says, uh, Kason, do you believe in algorithmic trading, automating strategy using MetaTrade? Uh, I have tried and I failed, so I don't do these auto trades. Yeah, all my trades are manually done. And I like it. I like to trade manually because I can really feel that I'm trading in the markets. Bolaji says, uh, Hi K, I I use only Ichimoku in 1 or 4 hour daily, weekly. The small time frame are not working for me because of the noise. Sure, then you can use these higher time frames and take swing trades. That's not a problem. Yeah, because, but for me, I, because I trade Forex, and Forex pairs move up and down every week, and we, we see less number of weekly trends than the daily trends, and that's why I take the daily to lower time frames to trade. But if, if I would be in the market of the index or gold, then I will be taking higher time frames to follow. Most likely, but for gold, I can still take the daily, but uh, for indices, for sure, or stock markets, I will take the higher time frames to follow, because five minute is too low for the stock or index, and also gold, five minute is too low, I think. Okay. So, I'm sorry, I see some other comments, but I can't uh, continue live because I have to go quickly. So, um, yeah, for now, I just finished the live, but uh, I hope you have a great weekend on Saturday. And, uh, yeah, see you in the next one. And in about 20 minutes, there will be an Ichimoku membership live. So, for those, for those who are Ichimoku members, I will see you soon. So tomorrow, again, I will be doing the weekly forecast exactly the same time at 2 p.m. UTC. So, and I will cover the Forex pairs in gold, WTI, and indices in Bitcoin. I will cover all the charts to prepare for next week. So hopefully I will see you there too. So until I see you next time, please have a great weekend. And uh, please stay healthy and stay safe and stay gold. Alright, thank you for everyone. Mata ne. Bye for now.